All right, I'm so excited for for our guest today. Uh, they're fans that like are celebrity fans, and they wear a hat and they go to a game, and it's like, yeah, no, I, I definitely love the team. I definitely, I love the team. Yeah, no, totally. I could talk your team, and then you ask him a little bit about the team, and you realize quickly that said fan is not really a fan; he's just from that area. Then there are guys like Stavi Baby. This is uh, Stavros oh, yeah. Halkius. He is on the podcast, and before. I even get into it. I have to tell the listeners here who listen to this. And usually I've got a, an NFL coach or an NFL general manager. Like, right. <laughs> this is, this is like a, like one of my dream guests. Cause I listen to you. I, li- I, I go back to your previous podcast, which you won't name the name sure. of it because you Can't know, be whatever. Named. <laughs> it should not be, Can't named. be named, but even like Our pandemic, corporate sponsors, <laughs> but even pandemic won't allow it. You and Sam Marill had the basketball podcast, and I would listen yes. to that podcast. But now Stavi Baby is one of the most popular comedy podcasts in the land. Stavros Halkius is a Baltimore native through and through, a Greek-American first generation, Stavi? That's right. I'm the first one of my family born here, yep. Okay, so Greek-American who has the pulse of the Ravens fan base and has now <laughs> found a whole new – like whole new market and whole new fan base with a character he does at the games known as Ronnie. Uh, Stavi, where do you want to start? This is is an incredible run that the Ravens are on and you are heart and soul of this thing from the fan perspective. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, by the way. I'm a fan as well. I love your stuff. Um, And it's crazy to be on an actual, like the Ravens. So I started doing a character. I I grew up in Baltimore. Uh, I remember when we got the team, I remember, you know, I was a football fan before the Ravens existed. Like, I remember, you know, rooting for uh, just watching the play. Like, I, I was weirdly a Vikings fan because okay. uh, Randy Moss was so good when I was – I was like, you know, like – I was young. I was like eight or nine. I don't yeah. exactly remember what it was. And he was so good. So I made the, – the purple transition came real nice. <laughs> but I remember like – I remember like – like that – I go back to before the team existed. I go back to being mad, watching football on Thanksgiving – at our family friend's house, because I come from a very Greek family where my parents do not understand football. My It's all about soccer. We played soccer. Well, I played high school football and my mom would come to my games and she would like cheer at all the wrong times. You know, like I, <laughs> I was a nose tackle, but I also kicked off because I played soccer. Um, and so uh, she would just cheer at the kickoffs thinking I scored a goal. You know what I mean? Like she, that's what she understood. So there was no football happening in my immediate family, but we had family friends we'd go to on Thanksgiving. And that was my like introduction, those Thanksgiving games. And I remember being mad. I was like, well, why don't we have a team? And it was like pretty quickly after that, I was, you know, I was there. I remember you go into a punt pass and kick contest. We had Testa Verde out there. We had Stover (laughs) out there. I like, I, I have been a fan of the Ravens since it has come to Baltimore. And so I just started messing around one day where I was just like, we've had, and Lamar got me back in, right? Like I was kind of, I love the Flacco run. Obviously that was the best, but it was like, we had a weird little lull there. You know what I mean? And it was like, and I was also starting to actually be an adult with responsibilities. Yeah. You couldn't just live and die football. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I could just get, you know, up with my friends and just watch (laughs) games and just gamble, you know, with a bookie. And just, that was my whole life. I was like, oh, I should, I was starting to travel for stand up and weirdly Sundays are travel days, you know? And I was like, and also, you know, uh, just, I was just kind of losing my, you know, I was just kind of lose. I was like, that was cool. I was a diehard for, as a fan, as a kid and the teams were great. I enjoyed some great stuff, but I was like, maybe it's time for me to kind of like become a much more casual fan. And I remember draft day, Lamar, I was like, wait, this guy's not going to fall. There's no way we're getting, I was literally had it on in the background as I'm just, you know, doing chores or something. And <laughs> he keeps falling and I'm like, Oh, great. I remember being like, great. The Patriots yeah, are going to get was. this guy and, and, and they're going to, you know, they're going to go right from Brady to the next. Like I always thought, I never bought into, you know, the whole, the, he's not going to be good. I thought the guy was awesome. And when we drafted Lamar, I was like, I'm, this is, 15 years I'm in <laughs> like yeah. I just it, sign me moment, up I knew yeah I was like so so I just re-became a diehard fan and I just started doing these dumb videos when we had a couple you know a couple because starting from that the MVP run it was such a magical year like watching Lamar really become his himself that first time and then losing to the Titans was so brutal 
that, you know, that first playoff run that they had. And so that it kind of, but from then until now, we've had a lot of these weird seasons that you can tell there's talent on the team. And we had the whole contract dispute. We had the whole everything. And so it was like, I was doing a lot of just, I was frustrated as a fan. <laughs> and so I just channeled all that into like a Baltimore townie character named Ronnie from, you know, I don't want to get into too much specifics of the, of, how well, each, the well, let's, let's paint let's paint where Ronnie's from and what Ronnie's life is yes. because I think it is yes. fair yes. that you could say there are different types of Ravens fans and they come from all sure. walks of life and all different yes yes definitely all different cultural backgrounds but Ronnie's a absolutely, very absolutely. Ronnie's a very specific one that I have met and yes. we get tweets yes. from and they have their thoughts on whether it's yep. Jimmy's seafood or their place that's in their suburb. Like <laughs> right, they, right, they've got right, takes. Right, right. Who Who's what got is the Ronnie? Best crab cakes? Yes. Yes. No, Ronnie is like I grew up in Greektown, which is southeast Baltimore, and it kind of borders the the there's like a suburb, technically a suburb that is worse somehow than Baltimore City. Like it's <laughs> like people, it's like it's like just become it was I say I say in my act, it's like it was like white flight happened and they instead of it's like people that were like oh we have to get away from these urban centers too many black people moving in and then they just pick made a shitter city <laughs> than the city they fled and that's and ronnie is descended from that where it's like just these kind of like dumb ass, he's just like a dumbass that had you know that just lived his family left baltimore a couple generations ago they live in a trash suburb they're just like, you know, uh, like small time criminals. You know, <laughs> my weed, deal, the guy I bought weed from was like, you know, growing up was, was a Ronnie style guy. You know, they're just like, you know, just white, just a nice, our nice type of white trash <laughs> that everybody has their own special kind of townie. And we have like vintage and it is like what's nice about it. It's a cousin of the minute all the mid-Atlantic trash is kind of connected. So it's like. <laughs> Pittsburgh, even the Pittsburgh kind of Yinzer accent is sort of, that's an offshoot. Philly definitely has, that's definitely, Philly's probably the closest. Yeah, you know, the Delco, that, the, yeah. The Delco, the, the very hard O's, you know. I do a bit about it on my first YouTube special, um, uh, on my first special on YouTube where, where I just kind of like, you know, they're just guys that have way too much confidence for no reason, have never achieved anything <laughs> in life. Uh, don't uh, don't realize they're being racist, but like you know, like that the character was always the the, the Ronnie love and listen, I love Joe Flacco, but Ronnie like loves Joe Flacco in a way that's like he thinks modern. He thinks the Ravens last season when Lamar was injured should have offered uh you know the I believe he was on the Jets. He should have yeah. offered the Jets uh R Lamar and two firsts for Flack <laughs> for current day Flacco. You and know, it works like, so perfect like, with with Ronnie yeah. because the last name. <laughs> It's just it's it's perfect for the Black accent. Blacko, oh, it's beautiful. I mean, that was meant to be. And shout out to Joe. I, he is that run. I mean, I love you know when we drafted Joe. I remember that too because you know Baltimore was a quarterback wilderness. I mean, we went yeah. from like we we win with Dilfer. We had Tony yeah. Banks. We went we you know we win with Dilfer, and then Muller. I remember everyone saying like. Gerback's going to be the savior. <laughs> you know, like I remember that. That was our big free agent splash. He sucked as soon as we got him. He completely went in the tank. And then, and then there's Bowler where we were like, oh, this guy. And it was always like this thing of, you know, Brian Billick was supposed because again, offensive Vikings mastermind, connection. Vikings, yeah. Offensive genius. And it's like, okay, he had a defensive team. Now he drafts his guy. He's going to put his system in. And it was Kyle Bowler, which, no, you know, Kyle Bowler got a second contract somehow. Salute to him. He figured it out. He yeah. was dog. <laughs> you know, he was not good. We had Chris Redman as a starting quarterback. Like, it was like, we just went through it. And then <clears throat> when Joe gets drafted, it's like, all right, this guy looks good. And it's like, but he fu he's from Delaware. <laughs> it's like, we got to get, it's like, it's like, it's like, he's just, that's where we go to the beach. He's like, he's what, he went to Rehoboth Beach University. <laughs> what is this? And then. He's and then you see that secrets in Ocean City. Yes. Yeah, 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 University of Secrets. <laughs> uh, but then I saw I saw one of those beautiful spirals, and I was like, uh. I'm all in. He was perfect. We were so good for so long with him. Um, and and I love. I definitely, I definitely. No, I just want to be on the record. No disrespect to Joe, one of my favorite players. But those guys really, you know, they latch on to him. Ronnie's favorite players are all, you know, Todd Heap, 
Tony Siragusa. Dennis there's Pitta. a pattern. The Dennis Pitta, there's a pattern, you know. Um, uh, but I so I'm doing these dumb videos when just to like just to get some steam out, just to like, you know, make fun of these guys, but also there it's a it's a safe space for me to get all my dumbest fan takes yeah. out. You know what I mean? Like there's a part of me that, you know, just believes all a little bit of it. And they just kind of kept I was just doing them for fun. And, you know, it's not like my audience, my stand up audience is like a big sports. Yeah. I'm a big sports fan. But, you know, like I did the bat. If anything, if I had any fans, it was like basketball fans because I used to work for MSG. Me and my Sam Morell, we did a we did a, a show for the MSG network. I was a writer for it. Uh, then me and Sam did our own basketball podcast for years. And I was just a really big hoops junkie. But these videos were really just for me. It's not even like my fan base liked them. In fact, yeah. some people were mad that I was doing well, sports I mean, stuff. Your, and then, your podcast is all life advice stuff. And like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. great with it. Yeah. And then you have this whole other character, Ronnie, that I think is like, has a whole other life with a whole other different fan base. And it was really just for me. Like, that's the thing. It's like, there was no strategy of like, like in hindsight, it was, if you're going to be cynical, you're like, well, football is the most, the most popular sport you need to. It's like, it's almost like somebody in a boardroom was like, Hey, you really got to hit this quadrant. You know yeah, what I mean? And yeah, then, like and an then agent, I think I just, yeah, like drew it up on a exactly, whiteboard. But that yeah. was, that was not it at all. I just, I just loved, I was doing it really for me in a way where it's like, I could have even not posted these videos and just done it as catharsis. And then I started putting them out and uh, you know, they were doing pretty well. And I think when I was promoting my special, I went on every platform possible, my first special and so part of that was the, you know, the Barstool guys, Big Cat and uh, PFT. I went on, I went on their show. I love that show. And I think that was kind of, I did the character there. Cause it's like, you got to do it. You know, that's just fun to do. They get it. Yeah. And I think that's when it kind of picked up a little bit. And then it just coincided with this magical rating season, season yeah. where it was like, you know, it's been a, it's been a crazy lucky year for me. And it, I think it all kind of like, and I don't want to, nobody clip this if it goes bad, but my, my 35th birthday is February 11th. I'm yeah. just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. It feels, you know, it's starting to, things are starting to swirl. Starting to feel really good. I, and look, Lamar's, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hopped up. I just woke up. I'm, I'm pumped no, to just be good. talking Ravens when we're yeah. so good. In um, late January, talking Ravens. In late nice. January, where Lamar, and Lamar proved every, every hating piece of wrong it's with true. that. I mean, that second half. Me and my brother, I take my I take my brother Nick to these games. Is he the he's trainer? Is he home. your personal trainer? He's the brother? trainer. He's yep. the trainer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't think he wants that publicized right now. I think he wants to maybe get me in the gym a couple of months before he starts <laughs> taking ownership of it. But uh, yeah, we did a training series, and I've only gotten fatter since then. I don't yep. know how it's helping his business, okay. but uh, but I'm there with my brother, and that first half was it's an amazing experience. You know, the Ravens let me somehow these dumb videos the ravens were like yeah come do i couldn't curse on the official ones but it's like they still let me do i still you know i get to write these things i get to still be a criminal that the ravens let into their thing and so they gave us great seats we're sitting there watching the whole game and that first half was like that, that kickback was like damn this is how a worse team beats a good team they hang around and it was every and that first half felt a little bit about what everybody was criticizing Lamar for, where it was like this season, I think what really separated him was he just proved the thing. I think everybody who believed in him thought, which is like, no, this, that he can pass as well as he can run. That's what makes him super elite. And I think in the first half, maybe you could argue he went a little too, like, you know, abandoned his reads and just ran whenever, whenever things were getting a little dicey. And then that second, and I'm sitting there with my brother and I'm like, dude, the vibes are a little right now that's what yep. i said going into the second half but I, I didn't i was like we're not panicking yet here's what needs to happen he's got to come out we get the ball step on their throats prove who he is and you say like your best case scenario you say it out loud and you think it's not going to go that good but yeah. at least let's get yeah, and it went even better now it went even better than i possibly could have expected and i was like that's it that's the guy it all snapped into focus and i think that first half was good because I also think it's kind of us exercising a little bit of our totally early, Playoffs. you know, we had a couple weird, we had a couple weird losses too. I mean, this team could have had like one loss. If you really know the Colts game in like, the rain was weird. The Colts, 
The Browns the game Steelers, was weird. The Browns game was weird. The, the first Steelers, like, you know, whatever. The last Steelers game, we didn't have anything to play for. Yeah. It was raining. Who gives? But that first Steelers game, we should have won for sure. And so it just felt good. It felt like we're really – it's good to muck up a little bit. Sometimes coming out of the bye can be weird. Teams can feel flat. And it really felt like we did that. And I am pumped to be playing the Chiefs. I'm pumped to, like – to get Lamar, like Lamar versus Mahomes is what you want. You want him to go out awesome. there and prove it because I've, you know, I've always thought he's just good. I really truly believe that. I mean, Mahomes is the man, of course, and he's he's got the Super Bowls. But when Lamar puts it together, and let's not forget, this is you know, Lamar was kind of thrust into a weird situation, whereas mm-hmm. like Mahomes got to kind of slowly come along, had a better had better weapons right away. You know what I mean? I mean, Lamar, who the was Lamar throwing to until this year? Crap I mean, tree. it's crazy. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah. And, and the and it's like so. It's I feel like Lamar is finally at a place where he has the team that matches his talent, and I'm happy. And it's almost like, you know, the coward's way is not having to face, you know, totally. the the guy who's the his, his yeah. generation's, you know, top. But I don't want the coward's way. Let's go earn it. Let's fight, let's go beat these mother, and then go to the Super Bowl, and you know. Whoever, whether it's, I think both those teams, I, hopefully, like, you know, I'm not even in, if it's not us, it's someone else category yeah. because I can't even think that way. But, like, good for the Lions if they're there. The totally. Niners, you know, those are both good teams that are are very worthy Super Bowl opponents. So who you guys beat by, want, man. Who just, you guys beat by 30 points, both of them. Yeah, already. we both those teams up, which, you know, yeah. that's a good sign. It's not, it's not that, you know, you never, I especially know. a guy like Shanahan, you never want to, like, it's give almost like weeks. exactly give him two weeks and you know he finally won his first game trailing in the fourth quarter so you know you don't want you don't want him to get him hot but still I listen, I'm doing great I, I listen to team. to you talk football it's like you know you're I listen to Dan Soder talk about either his boy McDaniel oh, yeah. with the Dolphins or his Niners and it's like you guys know know your stuff who are the comedians and I know your crew is like Norman and Soder yeah, yeah. and Joe Listen those guys who are the ones who are like football fans not just oh there's a football game on i'll hang with the boys yeah i mean list definitely this is a huge he's who, sports patriots fan. who is he who's he he's rolling? patriots of course yeah 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 but he knows i mean he's a he likes like he'll just go to a call he'll be on an off and he'll go to like a college basketball game of two unranked teams yeah. he just loves the like he loves sports in like a traditional american way like in the he loves it as part of the culture and obviously he's been very lucky to have the patriots be so good for so long um, you know, so you said it's Soder. He's literally boys with uh, McDaniels, like, but he's been a, 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 he's been a football fan his whole life. It's super important to him. Sam is definitely more of a, uh, you know, Sam's definitely more of a, um, hoops guy, but hoops, he knows everything about. Um, and then, you know, Bill Burr is kind of like the, I don't know Burr personally, uh, we've barely met, but it's like, he's kind of like the, the super fan. I mean, that mother sports so much and so it's like guys that run with him all you know Paul Verzi I'm gonna have on my podcast soon but he's a big sports guy I mean you have that's what's interesting is like a lot of a lot of comics and obviously Shane Gillis I mean Shane is a huge played you Shane, know Shane was talking was, he was he was being interviewed by like I think Theo Vaughn last week and he's talking about how Gabe Davis of the Bills one of his best friends I'm like what is this crossover I love yeah, that yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 no they're Gabe Davis does like does uh touchdown celebrations of like fat little Brazilians that sh- like Shane has little videos Shane has seen. Like he does <laughs> Shane has choreographed touchdown celebrate. I'm trying to get to that. I'm trying to get to that level of touchdown celebrations. Um, but you know, but yeah, Shane is a huge football fan for sure. But yeah, man, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of these guys, a lot of people love it. You know, it, it matters a lot to people. And then, you know, a lot of sports, a lot of comics are fans of other sports too. Basketball, fighting is huge, obviously. Um, but yeah, those are, I mean, those are, especially my circle, those are the guys. Soda for sure. So- Soda and Shane, I would say, for sure. When, when you really blew up, from my eyes, from like a national standpoint or got more mainstream was when you had the YouTube special. I think it was post-pandemic. And it was like, I, when yep. that hits and all of a sudden you're looking at it and there's 20 million views on YouTube, like your life changes overnight, right? Yeah, it was really weird because you think, you think, like, you start doing comedy and you're like, I'll get on HBO or I'll get on Comedy Central or I'll get on a TV show. 
And that's when people will know who, you know, that's when like, that's where I'll get a little notoriety and maybe people know who I am. And really what happened to me was just posting on the internet. Is <laughs> what Like, it was like, and to be honest with you, it was like, it was like before the special, it was my weird little strategy to post crowd work clips that I never thought would be this successful. Leading Explain what crowd work is, because a lot of these are football listeners. Yeah, like crowd right. work, yes, which is, of yes, course, sorry. controversial right now with a lot of these comedians who strictly do crowd work. Right. And I get that, too. I mean, so basically crowd work is, you know, there's stand, stand up comedy and crowd work is like any moment that's kind of off the cuff. You're talking to the crowd. Traditionally, it's like, you know your act is the jokes you write, they're prepared. And there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of, you know, um, improvisation or if something happens in the room, you address it. And I think for the most, for mo and there were always some comics who their thing was all crowd work, all talking to the crowd, all improvising. And they were really good at it. And they kind of like really worked on it as a skill. And I think for most of us, you would do a little of it. Like the way I approached it was like, I didn't want people to think I was a, kind of robot that I was just going to get out there and do my jokes. I always saw crowd work as a way to engage the crowd a little bit, talk to them for the first five minutes or so, maybe make some jokes, really form some, because that's what's special about stand up is every show is its own thing. Every show is different. And um, every audience, I mean, you'll never, even if you do the same exact jokes, you'll never have that group of people in the same yeah. room under the same conditions ever again. And I really enjoy that because every show is a little different. The energy is a little different. And so I always wanted to kind of ingratiate myself by not just going right into my material, but kind of talking to people. But that was always, you know, I would do it for five minutes out of an hour. And when I was, and I had to uh, self-produce a special because nobody was interested in my hour. Did I you try shopping it? Like you were on the yeah, tour for yeah. years. I know you opened for Robbie, Robert Kelly for years. And like you go and you have these meetings with like, Comedy Central and HBO and Netflix and Tubi and whatever else. And they're just like, no, we're not interested. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I think a, li a lot of that was the pandemic. I think, you know, some of these places were kind of rethinking their strategies. A lot of them were kind of cash strapped. Um, and I think uh, I just didn't have enough people didn't know me as a stand up comic. They knew me as a podcaster. Um, and I, I don't think I had enough clout to really make it happen. So I tried a couple of places were sort of interested, but. I didn't want to wait around and I just decided I'm going to shoot it myself. I'm going to put, you know, a bunch of money into it. And, but I had no, I had a small YouTube following, but I didn't have a big one. So I figured I'll post old jokes and get people to like, cause people had been, you know, on TikTok, people had been um, engaging with comedy that way. This is like 2021, yeah. I think when this, so I had seen it and Sam, like my buddy Sam had been doing really well. Other comics, Mark Norman had been doing really well doing short form stuff. And I remember thinking like, oh, that's dumb. That's a waste of time, <laughs> fellas. And these guys are in theaters off the strength of that. And so I'm like, all right, well, I got to figure something out. And so I posted old jokes because I was also a purist, right? I was like, yeah. crowd works bull. It's, it's all about the jokes. And then I posted all the old jokes I didn't want to do anymore. And that they were gone in like six days. And then I was like, all right. I guess let's see. And I had been preparing. I'd been trying to get a crowd work. I'd been trying to get a Comedy Central half hour for about a year. And I think maybe that would have happened if the pandemic didn't happen. Um, so I had recorded every set I did for a, for a year. I was on my I was on my Ed Reed, Reed you know play watch you know re watching the game tape back. So Belichick, I, I watch. Belichick I really and wasn't... Brady looking at the Ed Reed tape. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this dick joke. We got to get it down to two minutes. <laughs> it's running long. You know, um, and so I would I was a nerd and that I would watch a lot of my old film, a lot of my old shows to kind of tweak jokes. And so I just cut up all those random moments of crowd work that I told you before. I never thought it would amount to anything. I was just doing to ingratiate myself to the crowd. And I was like, we'll see if, if anything happens here. And just they started doing so well. I was shocked. And I had about a year's worth of those clips. And I just posted them to try and get people to follow me on YouTube. And it really worked. And yeah, dude, from that moment on, it was like, it was like, there was no big moment. There was no big, like, my life has changed moment. There was like one day, it was actually in Vegas. I was shooting a short film and so a bunch of, you know, Vegas is such a populated area. Yeah, You're yeah. just walking down, walking Stop down me. Fremont Street. Yeah. And I was getting that and I was like, what the hell is going? And it was like people that, you know, it was like older couples. It was like, 
nice younger women. It was just like not, you know, my my podcast, which we cannot legally can't say the name of because it has has a, a bodily fluid in the title of it. It was pretty successful and it, and it helped me like get my start and start touring. But it was it was like very online, very niche. And so I'm not just out in Vegas and it's just like all age groups, all different types of people. And it was like, I was like, what the hell is going on here? What happened? And it was just, people watch YouTube, it turns out. Who knows? Who knew? Yeah. And it really, it completely changed my career. And I'm so thankful for it. And, you know, a year later, got a Netflix special. And hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, my favorite team's going to the going to the Super Bowl. So turning up the right way. Yeah, the Fat Rascal is the Netflix special, which I loved. And I texted you. I'm like, it's tremendous. It's great. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah. The Ravens putting their social media team and letting you kind of do your thing. I I'm amazed by it. Like to be validated that way where your stuff is so blue yeah. usually and so Crazy, dark dude. and you're so smart. Yeah. That's the thing. I listen to your podcast and like, it's you and it's, it's your producer and you guys have on a guest every week and then you take calls from listeners, but like you're really smart yeah. and well read. And like, I could tell that this, this, this is fun, but you also could probably do anything you wanted and you choose to do this comedy route and then to have the Ravens. Yeah, I don't know about that. I appreciate it, but I think this Bro, is, I have these skills. <laughs> I mean, yeah. these, are, these are the skills. If this goes away, I'm, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Fair enough. You're 35. You're doing all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I love that you're in Astoria, Queens. That's where you live. You can I'm live anywhere. Queens, I love that you're, you didn't do the I'm Austin, Texas thing. You didn't follow everyone. No, and I love to be on York, Kill yeah, Tony. I really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love it. Like Austin's cool. It's a nice place to visit. You know, I like that they have a scene there. But ultimately, I and I thought it to be honest with you, I thought about it. Yeah, a lot. Of, you know, a lot of my friends live down there, but I just do love New York. I love the East Coast. I mean, I'm an East Coast guy, really. That's what it comes down to. I love Baltimore. I I have a place there still, and I'm trying to spend a little more time there. Um, you know, my family's all over there still, and so I like being on the East Coast. I just like, and New York is the best city. It's you the know, best. Best city. I, the I, best. I, I mean, same here. thing. I'll, you know, my co host on Good Yeah, Morning you Football. probably should be living in LA. Yeah, I should be. I'm there every weekend yeah. for Fox, but like <laughs> here in New York, uh, you know, my co hosts, nothing against them. They got families. They love it. They're in the Burbs. They're in Jersey. They're in, and I'm like, I live in Brooklyn. I love it here. I, I just, yeah, I, dude. I, get, I feed off the energy. And I think, you know, there's also the sense of pride that, like, yeah, we stuck around. Like, we're here. Yeah, we're no, here. It's, it's thick and thin. It really, when people talk about New York, it really sounds like someone making an abusive relationship work. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah, no, it is hard. It's expensive. And, you know, I don't have an extra room. And the, the get my guest room, you cannot stay with me. Sorry, get a hotel. <laughs> uh, and yeah, my heat hasn't worked for two months. But hey, greatest city in the world, baby. And But I still, I feel that pride where it's like, yeah, it takes a lot to make it work here. And I'm very, I am happy to be able to kind of found my niche. And, you know, because it, First couple of years I was here, man, I was like so depressed. I'm living in a three bedroom with Dude, five people. <laughs> and it was like, it was brutal, but we did it. We're in Queens. We're doing well. We got the, we got a, a podcast studio in my spare bedroom. I'm living, I'm living the, the dream. Um, So the Ravens, they, they're like, we're going to bring you in officially as like at Ravens and you're going to like represent us. Of course there's rules and ground the rules of what you can say, what you can't say and all this stuff. But like how surreal you're wearing. I think it was an Ogden jersey. You're, <laughs> You're yeah, there yeah. on the field, yeah. and and I'm like, my wife is from my wife's from my wife's from Baltimore. She's diehard Ravens. Her family's on it. She's like, she's like, yeah, your yeah. your 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 comedian friend is doing stuff for the Raven social media. I'm like, he's what? <laughs> I know, I know. It is really funny to get the because the Ravens are so cool, and because like they they let me do you know I do stuff on their channel, and obviously I have to I can't be it because the character is ignorant uh sexually explicit racist intolerant you know <laughs> you know it's like and so obviously i can't do that stuff but there is a there is still a like a humor to him where it's like yeah you can do a, a joke you can do a version of this that doesn't have to be dirty but to their credit they're not the stuff i still do the character on my own and you could you know you could work with a with a brand or like an organization it's like hey while you're doing this stuff for us can you on your own stuff can you like not, not be as yeah. dirty and to their credit they're let me do whatever i want they're like hey it's, do whatever you want like that's your thing i just can't do it from like play, like the, the only the only thing they ever asked are like hey don't do it when we give you field access because then it looks like we're basically signing we're off doubting on this. it do this do this from a public place <laughs> where it was clear you're doing it of your own volition 
We're not going to step on your freedom of speech. But, you know, so they're, they're the coolest people in the world to work with. And truly, I'm shocked and I feel so lucky to be able to do this. I mean, it is a dream come true where it's and it's like, you know, I've had a good year. Things have been great and I've done some cool stuff. But from a just like, you know, I literally was a little uh, a fat little sixth grader going into going into school the next day on a, with a huge Papa John's hangover, just like. <laughs> celebrating that win i remember that i still remember the day i'm in my met i'm in you know i sent my immigrant mother to buy me a jersey completely misunderstood got me a weird mesh practice jersey i you know all the kids you know i had no i wanted a i wanted a saragusa uh, you know i wanted a i want i want and she she comes with the, just a weird wrong thing but i'm in that little weird mesh jersey day after like i remember this this team has meant so much to me and so for all the like cool you know getting a special is great Getting to like do some acting stuff is cool. I got to work with great, really people I admire so much. But from just like a human being, the, like your inner child thing, it's like I'm on the field. I know Ravens. Like I, you know, I'm dapping up Geno Stone. My boy had seven interceptions. As he, you know, he he almost led the league. Uh, he got robbed, by the way, from the Pro Bowl. Uh, that's bullshit. Who got it? The <laughs> Steeler safety. Yeah. Uh, yeah get that mother. Out of Minka. there, Minka, well, Minka, Minka, <laughs> the Steelers, Minka, Geno Stone should have been in the in the fucking Pro Bowl. <laughs> you uh, get you can bleep it out, but I want that in there. You get but it don't in air there. The rest of the show, yeah. That's my one demand. Green M and M. That's my that. one demand. <laughs> yes. um, um, but two, it's, it's surreal, dude. Yeah. Two things before before we wrap. Uh, you had me this week when you mentioned the term Pulaski Highway. You said that, and I'm like, that is so, <laughs> so deep cut. Would you mind doing oh, yeah. a sanitized version of Ronnie, maybe 60 seconds, just to give the listeners, as we've been building it up, just a feel for... Sure, sure, Ronnie sure. Uh, Stavi, baby, take it. Yeah. Away. Yeah, here we go. Okay, here we go. Ravens are going to the Super Bowl. Bring on the Chiefs. Mahomes, overrated. We're going to tell him, yo. We're gonna, he, he won't be able to walk after this game. Kelsey, he's a podcaster, yo. That guy ain't a tight end no more. Hands don't work. Overrated. Reed ain't don't, don't know where he is. Is that Andy Reid or is that Wilford Brimley on the sidelines? I don't know. We're winning the Super Bowl, baby. I put. A, I just opened up a credit card in my son's name. I bet $50,000 on the Ravens winning. We're, let's do this. Let's go Ravens. Perfect. It's perfect. Oh, that's it. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. you, didn't even, and you didn't even say the words Jacoby Jones or Joe Flacco. Jacoby. Yeah, I did. I meant Jacoby too. That's another surreal thing. He's, he's just at the thing. It's dude, crazy. Uh, will you be there this weekend? So I have a, I have shows in Dallas at Saturday. I get my last show Saturday at midnight. I am taking, here's how much I love, I love the Ravens. This. I'm taking a 5 30 AM flight to get there it's the only direct i could find it southwest is a, a, what are we on what is this dallas to, to baltimore it's southwest bro Damn. that's how much i love the organization i'm waking i'm sleeping for one hour i'm gonna be hopped up but i can't i couldn't miss it i could and, and like with the ravens of you the afc championship the only the first time we've, we've hosted we've always gone through yeah you know we've never been on the, the number one seed when we got to the super bowl uh it's special, and that being there last week was so special. I'd, I'd gone to regular season games, but man, that I mean, you saw it in the how many how many false starts. I know, and I've seen Patrick Mahomes talk about how he has to use a silent count. It's one of the few places we're not going to make it easy on them. I want to be a part of that. I, I, you know, they, they gave me the opportunity, they invited me. So what am I going to say no to that? I'll make oh it God, work. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I was real close from canceling those Dallas shows, but they I, are already I a cancellation. I canceled on them last time, so this is the makeup. And to and to be clear, I canceled last time because I didn't. I shot my special the night before, and I was like, "Do I want to go to Dallas, or do I want to have a barbecue and take the next day?" So <laughs> I canceled on them to just get up with my friends. So I can't really can't do be it like, again. Hey, I'm canceling for a football game this time. It's like real disrespect. And Dallas has been through enough, and they will continue to be to be going through enough. They still got McCarthy over there. They're they'll they're, figure it they're, out. They're not they're not winning. So they you know they at least need a uh, a couple they chuckles need a pick me up that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. The other thing is this Chiefs team comes with a certain celebrity factor to them with Taylor right. and Jason Kelsey and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, well received in Baltimore. Taunted. Like, how does that go? 
Yeah, it's a, it's interesting. Um, I don't think they will be well received. I mean, they are so famous where it's like, you know, and you don't want to. Be, that's the other thing. It's like, ultimately, it's still like it's Taylor Swift. She's a you know superstar, you know billionaire pop star. But ultimately, it's like it's a player's girlfriend, and it's kind of a dick move to be. Sh- yeah, I think so. Loved ones, you know what I mean. You don't want to like, like you know, and even the fact that she, you know, it is cool, but at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, I don't know that everybody will be as enlightened as I am, Peter. I gotta be honest with you, buddy. I don't know that everybody will feel that way. Like Jay, and I love those. I do, unfortunately, love the Kelsey. I like what they're doing, so it does. And Jason's so like that's Jason's the thing. It's a like, man. Like Jason, if, I feel yeah. If totally. Travis. Travis, you know, pretty boy tight end. Travis is on in the stands and his brother's on the field. But you have the cool salt of the earth dad. You know what I mean? Like he's a, he's the man. He looked cool in Buffalo. Ed. But at the same time, it's like uh, at the same time, if he's coming out in those stands, I don't think it'll be as friendly as yeah. it was in Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like because you think you, the thing you need to understand with with guys like Baltimore natives. They think they can fight Jason and Kelsey. They're wrong. Obviously. <laughs> They're obviously will get their split, but they think they can take him. There's a guy who like got kicked off his high school football team for stealing catalytic converters in the parking lot who thinks he would have gone <laughs> all pro if it wasn't for that. And he, he has gout. He hasn't <laughs> lifted a weight in 10 years. And in his mind, he would fold Jason Kelsey up. So – that's the thing to be worried about is like the unearned Baltimore confidence, you know, <laughs> when you have somebody showing you up like that, but it sucks to, you know, I don't like being, I don't like having to uh, be aimed against. I don't like that being my fan enemy is Jason Kelsey because he's got, he's, that's a powerful brother, you know, yeah. older brother energy. You know, he's away. He's also, look, let's be honest. He's away from the kids. He's away from, yeah, you know, he's that, having that a time. Team, that team that fell apart. Team that fell apart towards the end, he's probably just getting fucked up, enjoying seeing his brother. Like you, you understand, and who knows what what celebrities will be in that box? They had a they had a hilarious lineup last time, but I, I don't know if everybody's making the trip. I mean, they made the trip to Buffalo. I don't know if no. they'll make the trip to Baltimore. That'll be interesting. I'll be there also. I'm gonna look for you pregame. Hopefully, oh uh, yeah, I'll come see say you. what's up, dude. What's the jersey? Are you going with Ogden again, or have you had any luck finding any any other? I mean, Michael McCrary would be pretty badass. I thought McCrary. I love McCrary. I am. I am literally in communication with uh, Tony Saragusa's children to try and get a Saragusa jersey. Oh yeah, that'd they're be an awesome harder, tribute. They're harder. They're harder to find than you think. What Tony? Um, we're ninety nine. Was he ninety nine? Is that what? Ninety eight. Ninety eight. Ninety eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I so if it's a it's I've been kind of going with the old school rave like I did Ed Reed the last time. If it's not if it's not Goose, pro, I might go Ed Reed. Ed Reed's my favorite Raven of all time. Obviously, uh, but also also karmically, maybe it's time to get the Lamar jersey out. Support mm-hmm. my guy as he's mm-hmm. this is a big one for him. I mean, this is yeah. yeah. Let's let's take let's take Mahomes down. So I have a lot of. I have a lot of. I might save Saragusa for the suit. You know, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If 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 and when I might keep the powder dry because Goose. You know, it would be a great tribute. Great Raven, one of my favorite. Obviously, when you're when you're a chubby little Greek guy and you see a chubby Italian that's just. And I play. I ended up playing nose tackle too when I played that's in high amazing. school. So I love. I love Goose. So you know. Uh, either way, though, we've got I've got a lot of decisions to make, dude. I got a lot of decisions to make here. My last one for you, and then we're gonna let you go because you've given us way too much yeah, time. Yeah. I so appreciate. No worries, it. dude. You know, it's Vegas. It's it's glitz. It's glamour. It's this whole thing. There's a legit chance that it's the cities of Baltimore and Detroit in the first Las Vegas Super Bowl. <laughs> How amazing! <laughs> How good is that? Yeah. A lot of a lot of grandma's social security checks are gonna be put on the roulette wheel. That weekend, I'll tell you that much. There's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot, a lot of, a lot of money that cannot be afforded to be gambled will be gambled that weekend. I'll tell you that much. That's awesome, uh, Stavi awesome. baby. Your podcast is called Stavi's World. Um, S T A A V Y. Stavi's World. S T A V V Y. V V Y. Sorry, I botched it. Yep. Sorry. No um, worries. You've played the Beacon Theater. You've played a bunch of big places. Where, where can we see you the next few weeks if we want to see your stand up? 
Next few weeks, I'm ending the tour. These are the makeup dates. Uh, so I have Dallas at the Majestic Theater. If you want to see me the night before, I fly back to Baltimore to see the to uh, watch the AFC Championship game. I'm there that Saturday. And then the next weekend, I'm making up actually Detroit. So hopefully Detroit, hopefully you're in the Super Bowl and you're awesome. celebrating. But come and, come and celebrate by coming to see me. I'm in Detroit. I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I had to make up those dates too. And then uh, – we're done for a little while. Just watch. I have two specials out there. YouTube special. It's out there for free. You can get that right now called Live at the Lodge Room. And then if you have Netflix, uh, the special I just put out um, a couple months ago, or last month, I guess, was uh, Fat Rascal. So you can, you can watch me on the internet if I'm not coming to your town anytime soon. And I put out a bunch of stuff online, too. So. It's amazing online. Yeah, uh, good luck this weekend, dude. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me.